we give you praise and adoration. Thank you, everybody who have shown up today. Thank you, Rev. Bishop Steve. Thank you, every one of you. We give God praise that we've gathered once again today. Ibinobo, how are you? How are you doing? Been a long time that we have not spoken. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Um, we give God glory. We thank him for what he's doing. And um, the move of God in our life is so powerful and we celebrate it. We give him praise and adoration. Today in our prayer meeting, in the altar meeting today, we want to look at the covenant of the place of worship. The covenant of the place of worship. Don't forget that yesterday we looked at the value of your man of God. The value of your man of God. I believe that um, I'm still I'm still consulting the um, the media department to make sure that they upload that uh, the message of yesterday. Please, you need to go to Caleb Caleb Ministries. Caleb Caleb Ministries in, on YouTube and um, subscribe, subscribe and also not only subscribing, uh, also click the notification button. We are up to 300 and something on the altar and every time I look at the subscription, it's only 90 something, which means that a lot of us are not really reaching out to our YouTube channel. You can also send it to people. Uh, bless somebody with these messages. Don't be very stingy uh, uh, with it. Spread it, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 spread it all over. The Bible said that it takes the company of men to publish the word. He gave the word. It takes the company of men to publish it. So help us spread out um, the, the altar meeting because majorly on that platform, it is where we put all our altar messages. So reach out to it, send it out to people. Even this one that we are doing today, by the grace of God, by the time we finish, they're going to upload it. Right. So we looked at yesterday the value of your man of God. And we made it very clear that we shouldn't reduce your man from God to the fivefold ministry, to the fivefold ministry. If you check the Bible, you will discover that some of the people that God used to write the Bible, they were not pastors. Some of them were farmers. Some of them were in different um, careers, in different walks of life. But they received the word of God and God used them. God sent them out to different set of people. So in our generation, we've only reduced a man from God, only the fivefold ministry, which is error. I want you to be open-minded. I want you to be sensitive unto God because God can send you a carpenter that will give you a word that will change your life. So you, you, you need to listen to yesterday's meeting to be able to understand the value of your man of God. There are certain things we opened up and we pray. But today I want us to look at the mystery, the covenant of your worship, your place of worship, your place of worship. I've encouraged every one of us here that don't just stay on online meeting alone. Don't just stay on online meeting alone. You need to have a local assembly. You need to have a local assembly because the Bible said, um, it said, forsake not the gathering of yourself together. Mm -hmm. The gathering is relevant. The gathering is relevant. The gathering is scriptural. You need to find a local assembly uh, to belong so that you can invest yourself, invest your time, invest your treasures, and also participate in building one another. 
There's something that happens when we come together, actually coming together, working with one another, with the body of believers. But having said that, don't just walk into any place. Don't just walk into any place and start fellowshipping. Don't do that. You need to be selective. You need to be directed. You need to be laid. But I believe that if you reach out unto God, he is really going to direct you. So today I want to show you the spirituality of your worship place. How you can engage a covenant place of worship and it will change your life. It will just turn around everything about you. So let's open up our hearts as we get into the word of God today to look at it and then we're going to pray and believe God for turn around in our life. Can we look at the book of Matthew? The book of Matthew chapter 18. Let's go from the book of Matthew chapter 18 and let's open it up from there. Now in verse 19, he said, Again, I say unto you, King James, Again, I say unto you, If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Now pay attention to verse 20. It says, For where two or three are gathered, did you see that? Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Can you see how the gathering of believers can become a platform or epicenter for the manifestation of the glory of God. Me gathering of believers who have understanding of the spiritual implication of their gathering can force God down into a particular geographical location. He said, for where two or three are gathered. You see, so many times people are looking for big churches, crowded churches. You might not have God where the crowd is. Does not mean that the crowd is wrong. Please hear what I'm talking about. Because some of us have joined crowd and we are lost in the crowd. We don't even know what we are doing in the midst of the crowd. It says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, in my name, in my name, there am I in the midst of, of them. So are you looking for God? Do you really want to encounter God? It said, there is a place you will find me where two or three believers dedicated devoted, consecrated servants and disciples of mine, where two or three of them are gathered together, he said, of course, their gathering is not going to be an ordinary place. The Spirit of God is attracted by the gathering of believers. Let me say that again. The Spirit of God is attracted by the gathering of believers. In other words, there is something that happens in the realms of the spirit. When believers who are devoted servants of God, servants of God, gathers in his name, it says that my presence will come down. I will, I will launch my presence wherever they have gathered. Every gathering has spirit that is controlling it. So he said, when you gather together in my name, my presence will be there. Of course, if his presence is there, yokes will be broken. Powers of darkness will be expelled. His, the gathering of his people brings him down. 
you need to be very conscious of this particular fact when you are choosing a place of worship or when you are gathering together, understand that the gathering of believers is not village meeting, it's not political rally, it's not entertainment forum, it's not like people who go to football or people who go for entertainment. It is a spiritual gathering. When we gather together, God comes down. With that particular consciousness, somebody can be healed. Somebody can be delivered. It's not all about the pastor. It's not all about the man of God. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? You can get healed before the arrival of the man of God. If you understand the spiritual implication or the content of your gathering. Can you go to First John quickly? First John chapter 1. Let's look at First John chapter 1. I want to show you something again. It's all about our gathering. I'm not talking about fellowship. Fellowship is different from gathering. Please don't, don't, don't. You know, we confuse a lot of things in the, in the New Testament. Fellowship is not gathering. The gathering of believers. You can gather without fellowshipping. Okay? And you can fellowship without gathering. You get what I'm talking about? Fellowship is different from gathering. I'm dealing with the gathering of believers. Now, I want you to look at this quickly. Um, 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. It says, That which was from the beginning, which which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of God. Now verse 2 said, For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that, that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and have and had declared we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. You see, our fellowship is with the Father. It's a spiritual thing when we come together to do fellowship. Our fellowship, we are not alone when we gather to do fellowship. The Father comes down to be part and parcel of our fellowship. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Now, I want you to go a little bit. I'm still reading the, the scriptures, the background, please. Follow the scriptures. I'm going to take you to something deeper. Now, can you look at that same First John chapter 1? Let's go down to verse 6. He said, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Verse 7 said, but if we walk, if we walk in the light, how do we walk in the light? The light is the word of God. Okay? If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Now watch this. Every time I go for fellowship, every time I gather in church, I attend church, I get to the place of fellowship, a place of, of, of worship, a place of gathering. I always have this picture on my mind. Please watch this. I always have picture, this picture on my mind. I always picture Jesus, who is the high priest of the New Testament, standing in the midst of our gathering with the bowl of the blood with the bowl of the blood, because he said, if we fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus cleanseth us from all sin. So every time we gather together to do fellowship, 
The high priest comes with the bowl of the blood. And he is sprinkling the blood to every attendant, everyone who have attended. That's why you can come to church with heavy heart. And before you know it, all of a sudden you are lightened up. Maybe by the song somebody sang or the testimony somebody gave or the word of God. Have you noticed that when you are in church, it's easy for you, if you are paying attention, for you to receive revelations. It's easy for your anxiety to go. You, 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 your difficult situation can look so easy. I've had people who, who, who attended uh, meetings and offerings were called. They forgot all their problems. They gave all their money. And when they got home, they, oh my God, what happened? I've done that many times. I've done that many times. I remember when I gave out particular money, I didn't have transport to go home. I have to, I have to walk home many years ago. And you're, you're, you're asking yourself, why did I even get it? Some people go to the point, they said, ah, that man of God charmed me. You know, I've had somebody who gave out some money and he went to church and said, please give me back my money. I didn't know when I gave it. It's not as if that the church is charming you. It's just because of the presence that was in the church. It's a supernatural place. The gathering of believers is a supernatural place. It's not an ordinary place. Please hear me. And if you don't have this, this consciousness, you can go to church, you can, you can gather for years and your life will never change. If you have the consciousness that, look, where I'm going, God is already there. It's not about the pastor. It's all about the presence of God that says, where two or three of you gather together in my name, I'm there. So you're going to meet with God. That consciousness can break the yoke. It's, it's a covenant place. The garden of believers is a covenant place. When we come together with the consciousness that anointing of God, the power of God, the glory of God, we are meeting in the name of Jesus. Yokes can be broken. Bodies can be lifted. Suddenly, somebody can transform just by the gathering of the people of God. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? I want you to take us some time right now because this one also is a fellowship, is a gathering. It's a gathering in the spirit. Let's open up our mouth and thank the Lord for his presence in this place today. Thank you, Father, in the name of Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship and adore you. We give you praise and adoration. We honor you, Jesus. We, we celebrate you. Somebody open your mouth. Come on. Give him praise and adoration. Worship him right now in the name of Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you because yokes are being broken today. Lord, we thank you because loads are lifted. Thank you for your word that is cleansing us, is making us whole, is healing our brokenness, is building us up. Thank you for your spirit, O oh God, that are binding us together. Thank you, Lord, King of glory. Lembo shaka zobeli gadosh. Eto seko pariga doshke, rakota kaze preliga doshke, mete kaparaga zo preliga badulia, enda zada, enda zada, enda zada, enda zada, tiga balando saparika, eko seko preliga doshke, me yeko taz, atoske belegos, gazu prelika toshke, yeko takabaria, mareko siko pariga dosh, alika toska balazia. Melianda Gazo, Melianda Gazo, Melianda Gazo, Melianda Gazo. You feel that pain on any part of your body. Put your hands right now. Command that sickness to leave. Come on. There is presence of God in this gathering today. Open up your mouth in the name of Lord Jesus. Command that sickness to go. Command that pain to go. Command that yoke to go. Malika Toski. Empala Gazo Prelika Toskia. Yekota Kabaria. Father, we have come together in your name. 
Lord King of Lord, you said in that particular day, it's not going to be a matter of the place of gathering alone. It is those that worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, King of eternal glory, by your spirit, we have been bonded together. And we pray right now that every yoke of sickness, limitation, bondages, let it begin to leap people from this meeting. We break that hold of darkness. We break that shackle. We command healing right now. We send forth your word and we command the healing of your people in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Just check your body right now. Check your body right now. Check your body right now. Check your body and give him the praise in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We give you praise and adoration. I take authority over every spirit of infirmity. I take authority every spirit of infirmity. Five brought in the name of Lord Jesus. Go right now in the mighty name of Lord Jesus. Arthritis go in the name of Lord Jesus. That back pain in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That persistent cough. I command lose your stronghold right now. Let there be a liberty by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to show you something quickly. Can we go to the book of Matthew chapter 13? Still on this mystery of the covenant, the covenant of the worship place. You know, we're not in ordinary meeting this moment. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. I want you to say this, Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. You will never leave this place the same way you came. For the anointing of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Look at it. Matthew chapter 13. I want you to say this. Matthew 13 verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why are you talking to them in parables? Why are you not open? Why are you not plain? Why are you telling them stories instead of telling them the reality? Verse 11, Jesus answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries. It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Somebody say mysteries. Mysteries. Can I hear you say mysteries? The Greek word for mystery there is mysterion. Mysterion. Do you know the direct English meaning of mysterion? It means secret court. It means a close, it's a close society that you cannot belong to except you are initiated into it. Mysterion talks about a close group of people that shares exclusive secrets that you cannot know except you are initiated into their team. That's called. Mysterion talks about secret society. That's what you talk about. The kingdom of God is not an open kingdom. It exists in secrets. It is a mysterion. It's a close, deep-rooted organization that you cannot be part or you know what is going in there except you are initiated into it. So the kingdom of God oppressed like courts. If you have to be raw with the meaning of it, you know what happened is that these guys have taken the realities of the kingdom, they corrupted it, and now we are afraid of using those words. 
You know what happened in secret society? You can't know what they are doing. Even if you are the wife of the man who is in the secret court, he's not going to tell you what is happening. Even if they give you, you see things, you don't understand it. The only way you can participate is when you are initiated, then you know what is going on there. You know, one of my wife's junior brother, thank God he's a pastor today. Before he get born again, he was being warned and they said, don't eat this food though. You don't know. They will initiate you. He said, ah, I need to be initiated. Let me go to their meeting to know what they are doing. <laughs> You know, the family was saying, don't eat. You eat witchcraft one day. He said, that's what I want to do. I want to follow them to their meeting. Do you really know what they're doing there? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, but let, 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 let's be very practical. That's what, that's what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God, you cannot understand the realities that goes on there except you are initiated into it. It's a mysterion. So he says here, listen, I, I, I tell them parables because they are outside the fold. It's not meant for them. This thing I'm talking to them in parables, it's, not, it's a reality that they are not initiated to understand. Come on now, you hear what I'm talking about? So an unbeliever cannot tell you how to be a child of God. Come on now. You see them all over social media. They are telling you how pastors should behave. They are telling you how, how, how pastors should work, how church should work. That's a man that is not born again. He's vetoing a child of God. He's telling you how to act. You preach messages in church. Unbelievers come to mention social media to analyze it. Come on now, are you hearing what I'm talking about? Jesus said, if you don't belong in, in that particular fold, you cannot know. You cannot understand. Can you look at first, 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 um, first Corinthians quickly? Let me show you. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. I'm going to pray for you now. I'm going to pray for you because these things are deep. Huh? Look at verse 4. Look at verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It said, but the natural man, that's a man that is not born again. Those people that Jesus is, is talking to in parable, the natural man is not part of the kingdom. It's not born again. It's not a spiritual man. But a natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. Even if you give it to him, he can't receive it. He can't receive the spiritual things. He doesn't understand it. He doesn't have the capacity, what it takes to understand. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. They don't understand why you fast. They don't understand why you give titan. They say you have taken your money, you have gone to church and built a house for pastor. They don't understand why he said you should not sleep with a woman or a man without being born again, without getting married? How can you not have fun? These are church, 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 church. Now church you go chop. They don't understand. He's a natural man. He's a natural man. When you tell them that, listen, when you sleep with a woman that is not your wife or a man that is not your husband, you are erecting an altar for evil spirits. Mm -hmm. They said, get out here. That's your church has spoiled your mind. The Bible said, but a natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Neither can he know them. He doesn't have what it takes to know. If you are outside the kingdom, you can't understand how the kingdom works. And so many times, these are people that decide for believers what they should do. How did you come to? How do we know? What does it take to know? Listen, what does it take to know? Look at, go a little bit to verse, verse 9. Verse 9, I want you to pray. 
Go a little bit to verse 9. Are you there? Of that same first Corinthians chapter 2, it said, But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. You see, you don't connect with it through your senses. Sexual, sensual man cannot understand it. Your natural knowledge cannot understand it. How do we break into it? He said, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. You need to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit for you to investigate the deep things of the spirit. And where do we, and when do we get it? When you're born again, when you're giving your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. Now the Spirit of God can begin to educate you. The Spirit can show you that this is why this is this one. Look at verse 12 of it quickly. I want you to see verse 12. I want you to see verse 12 before I begin to show you. It said, now we have, we have, now we have received not the spirit of the world. So that is the spirit that is called the spirit of the world. But the spirit which is of God. We have received the spirit which is of God. There's a spirit that is called the spirit of the world. People are not word, worldly. They're not worldly by being natural. There's a spirit that makes people to be worldly. It's called the spirit of the world. There are two spirits that are involved here. The spirit of the world and the spirit that is of God. The spirit that is of God, the function is that, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. It is freely given to us, but we need the spirit of God to know them. So the spirit of God is what initiates you into the dynamics, into the dynamics of the kingdom. When you have the spirit of God, you can now understand the meanings of things in the realms of God. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? You can function in the things of God. So it's not just going to church that makes you to understand the value of it. No. Every single thing God asks us to do, there is a reality that he represents. There's a reality we activate. Don't just go to church because it's Sunday or it's because... You know, this uh, church I was born. No, don't just go there because it's the church where you are born into. That's a reason. That's a reason. The spirit of God have a reason. Every single thing that God asks us to do, that's a reality that we activate. Otherwise, you are into religion. Every single thing that God asks us to do, that's a reality that we activate. And you need to be intentional. Conscious of the reality you are activating. Can I show you? Uh, let, let, let me show you some things quickly. I, I, I want you to understand. This is why I say you don't just walk into any church. Don't just walk into any garden. Even the when you are now, question it. Investigate it to know if that is where God wants you to be. That's a covenant. Let, let me show you this. Mysteries, mis ministries, ministries or churches. Ministries, you know, it have different names. Life Man Den, Winner's Chapel, Redeemed Christian Church. We have different names. Victory, we have different names. But they are ministries. Ministries are human agents of the spiritual powers and kingdoms that they serve. Please understand it. Ministries, that thing you call ministries, light mending, world mission, this, uh, they are all agents. They are all agents. The man of God, the woman of God, serving in that place, founders of that, they are all agents. They are all agents of supernatural beings. If they are serving God, they are agents of God. If there's another spirit that they are serving, they are the agent of that spirit. Come on now, you hear what I'm saying? So anyone 
who enters a house of worship and interacts with the ministers who oversees the place is entering into a covenant with the spiritual kingdom that that supernatural that 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 overseer or the founder have locked on into you may not know you are not aware of it but that's why i'm talking to you today if a man have gone to marine spirit and they have made a covenant and they open an outlet and that they call it wonder signs faith this cathedral and you carry your bible and walk in there you are already entering into a covenant with the spirit that governs the place because that man there is an agent representing an invisible supernatural being. Everyone who comes in is stepping into a covenant. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So there's a positive side of it and there's also a negative side of it. If you are going to a a ministry that is God-based. Treat that pastor, treat that evangelist, treat that, that apostle, that bishop, treat him as an agent of the Most High God because that's who he is. He can unlock depths. He can unlock depths. Mm. Not just because of his own personal anointing but your own revelation. That's why you must design a place before you become a part of it. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Those who worship in such a place are automatically in covenant with the kingdom. If it is the kingdom of darkness, whether you know it or not, you are made a covenant. The Gibeonites deceive the Israelites. In Joshua chapter 9, and they made a covenant, and the covenant stood. The covenant was, was respected by God, even though it was deceptive covenant. You get what I'm talking about? Don't just wake up. That's why I said you need to have fellowship, but you must decide a place, especially in a time such as this. You must decide a place. You must discern the place because every those who worship in such a place are automatically in covenant with the kingdom, either kingdom of darkness or kingdom of light, that the overseer is in league with. Because of their ignorance and inability to discern truth, many who came to worship God sincerely end up covenanting with Satan. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, pastor, how do I know? How do I know? How do I know the one? You will know. You will know if your spirit is alive. You will know your spirit will trouble you. Your spirit will trouble you. I want you to pray. I want you, if you sincerely ask God, he is going to bring you into a place that belongs unto you. Listen, what God can do with proper covenant place of worship that he led you into is amazing. Is amazing. Doors will unlock. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Heaven will transform your life within a short period of time. Design it. He said, I will give you a pastor after my heart. I want us to pray. I want to lead you to prayers. Especially those of us that have been in wrong places and right now we don't have tests for church anymore. We have, we have been wounded. We have been battered and shattered. At times also our ignorance have not allowed us to behave the way we ought to behave in the place of worship. So we hurt ourselves. 
Come on now, you hear what I'm saying? It's two ways. But we're going to pray right now that every destiny in this meeting today who have been destroyed by the place of worship, wrong place of worship, or even their own abuse of place of worship. It's two sides. You might be in the right place, but you behave improperly and you ended up being violated. Or sincerely, you walk into a wrong environment and you are being hurt. Today, God has remembered you. There shall be deliverance for you. There shall be cleansing. And those who are expecting God's leading, I believe that the power of the Almighty is going to work in your life. Lift up your hand and say, My Father, my God, I withdraw my submission to all witchcraft leadership that I have submitted to in time past. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus. Can you pray that prayer with me? Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus, in response to your word, I withdraw my submission to all witchcraft leadership in Jesus' mighty name I pray. In the name of Lord Jesus. Second prayer, I want you to pray. Lift up your hands and declare. Father, every religious covenant, every religious agreement that has been established in my life, Father, I declare it dissolved today by the power of the blood of Jesus. Every religious covenant, Every demonic covenant that have been established through religious channels, religious altars, I stand today and I dissolve it. I dismantle it in the mighty name of Lord Jesus. Pray that prayer right now. Father, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus, every one of us that have stepped into religious arenas, and the enemy have bound us, O King of glory, halted our destiny, manipulated and polluted our destinies, O King of eternal glory. Today we stand on the fountain of the blood of Jesus, and we receive deliverance. We receive cleansing in the mighty name of Lord Jesus. Lift up your hand and pray with me. I say, Father, I repent of every evil hand, evil hand, that four spiritual leaders have laid upon my life and every content, content imparted, I reverse it at this hour in the mighty name of Lord Jesus. We bring repentance before you. Every, oh God, evil hands that unknowingly we have submitted our hate to receive from four spiritual leaders Father, in the name of Lord Jesus, we, is, we destroy it right now by the blood. We bring repentance unto you and we revoke the contents in the mighty name of Lord Jesus. Lift up your voice, pray again, and say in the name of Lord Jesus, every decree and evil proclamations made over my life by agents of the kingdom of darkness, Father, I annul them. I nullify them. Every decree, evil decree, evil proclamation made over my life by agents of darkness, by agents of darkness, made over my family, by agents of darkness. Father, I nullify them. Now in the name of Lord Jesus, pray one more time with me and say, Father, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus, I refuse, I resist the authorities that force religious leaders establish over my life when I submitted under them. I cancel it today in the mighty name of Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus. 
Now I want you to pray. I want you to pray on the other side of it. I want you to thank the Lord who have planted you in a decent place of worship. I want you to, those of you that are already in a decent place of worship, you know that the Spirit of God flows from that place of worship. I want you to thank God right now. Thank God as a father. Thank you for the house of worship where you have planted me. Thank you, Lord, for the servant of God that you have put over my life. Thank you, King of eternal glory, for leading me into this glorious place of worship. I give you praise and adoration. I all know you, King of eternal glory. I magnify your holy name. Come and pray over your pastor right now. Pray over your church right now. Pray over the house of worship. Pray right now in the name of Lord Jesus. That the hand of the Lord will be upon your pastor. The hand of the Lord will be upon your man of God. Pray right now in the name of Lord Jesus. That the enemy shall not hijack the house of worship. That the spirit of God will continue to flow in the house of worship. The power of God shall be made manifest. That there will be spiritual food, quality food. No contamination of the revelation of the word of God. That anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost will continue to flow from every member, every departmental head, wherever they are. The enemy shall not hijack them. In the name of Lord Jesus, we pray against pollution. This house of worship that have failed us, that have provided shelter, that have provided covering, that have kept us, Lord, it shall not be polluted. We pray for the servant of God. We pray for his family. We pray for his children. We pray for everyone in the house of worship. I pray, O oh King of eternal glory, that your presence will be made manifest in the mighty name of Lord Jesus. Kalabo Shanta Kasulia, Ekota Kabaria, Melege Sante, Keberi Katos, Rekuta Kazaba, Mari Katos Kegezo, Maye kota kaba, manze to kapariga zulia, reko dagaba, maraka so preluka tulia. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. I give you praise. I give you adoration. Thank you, Lord of hosts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, I want you to see this scripture and then we will close. I want you to look at the book of, um, the book of Hebrews. If I'm not mistaken, I think it should be Hebrews 13. Let me check it out. Costan, uh, uh, um, don't post until I confirm that is what I'm looking for. Hebrews chapter 13. Are you there? Hebrews 13. Yes, Hebrews 13 verse, verse 17. I want to pray for you. Listen to me. I want to pray for you and I'm going to ask you to do something today that we open up your heavens. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 said, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself for the watch for your souls. The watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Do you know what the Bible says that it is unprofitable for you? It said it's not profitable for you when the man of God I have set over your life is struggling to watch over your life. If he is suffering to watch over your life. He said it's not profitable for you. It's not going to profit your business. It's not going to profit your home. It's not going to profit your life. If the man that I have said over to watch your soul is struggling to do it. Is doing it under pain. Is doing it under humiliation. 
is doing it under all kinds of affliction. He said, it's not going to be profitable unto you. It is profitable for you if your man of God have been pushed into a comfortable place. This is the reason why the Shunammite woman said to her husband, let's build a little place up. Let's put bed so that the man of God will not be sleeping on the floor when he come to us. Let's put a table so that he can study. Let's put light. Let's make it comfortable for him. And it was only when the man of God was lying down on that bed, he said, a, 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 call that woman. What does she really need? All the time he had been coming, we've never had him. We've never had anointing. Remember that woman? It was after they are built. What I'm telling you is in is in is in is in First Kings chapter four. Is it First King or Second Kings? Yeah, First King, First King chapter four. The Shunammite woman. It was after the man of God laid down on the bed. He said, mm -mm, "What we are doing is not right. We'll be eating the food of this woman now. No, she have gone to another level. Um, please go and bring her. What really?" Can we do for her? Until the anointing is lifted, it does not pour out upon your life. I want you to be one of, out of many, that will make the work of the man of God over your life. Make that work easy for them. Make that work easy for them. Make to watch over your soul. And they are not giving account to you. They are going to give account before God. Let nothing distract them from carrying out that job with joy. Every time the man of God is happy over you, as a person assigned unto him, the anointing flows. Grace flows. Difficult things become very easy. I want you to reach out to your man of God and make sure that you are part of those that makes difficult job like watching over your soul to become easy. When you do that, watch out how God going to turn every single thing in your life around. Don't join the multitude that criticize don't join the multitude that, that, that attacks. Don't join the judgmental group, the gossip group, the fault finders. Don't join them. If you have a place of worship, you know that God put you. Don't take it for granted. I pray for you today. The heavens over you will continue to open in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Let it be that when I meet with your pastor, he will give a very credible account that since this one I've been praying in the altar, I have seen significant change in their lives. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will continue to bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. i see you tomorrow. Enjoy the blessings of this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. See you tomorrow.